Welcome to Inside of the Edition on Lacrosse Magazine's new YouTube channel. I'm Matt DeSilva, Editor-in-Chief of Lacrosse Magazine. And I'm Corey McLaughlin, Deputy Editor of Lacrosse Magazine. So here's what you can expect on our new channel here. Uh, we're, we're looking to really bring the pages of the magazine to life. We have some of the best storytellers in the business, and we've done so a lot in this fashion on the print medium. So you can go anywhere and find lacrosse highlights and stand-up interviews. What we're looking to bring you here are the stories, the personalities, the lifestyle, and the culture of the sport. Really looking to take the pages of the magazine and bring them to life. What we're going to try to do with these inside the edition segments is kind of take you behind the stories and, and explain why they are in the magazine and kind of you know why they're important to you, what what the you know what the stories behind the personalities are, and you know give you an inside look at how how the magazine comes together and, and our thought process behind uh, you know what what you see and what finally appears. One of the questions we most commonly get here at Lacrosse Magazine is how do you choose who winds up on the cover? Really with Miles Jones it was only a matter of time, especially after his truly epic performance in the NCAA tournament last year. We wanted to get to know more about his upbringing and really how he emerged and, and really became more comfortable in his role as someone who could potentially be a face of the game. Yeah, anybody who's kind of followed his career and followed Duke uh, in recent seasons has known Miles Jones' potential and uh, for him to kind of put it all together last season and take his you know raw skills and, and hone his kind of stick skills and, and all that stuff. Um, it was really fun for to see that come together and we just kind of wanted to explain you know how that happened and where he came from and you know what he can do in the future. And moving forward into 2015 everybody's going to be talking about Miles Jones. So this was a perfect timing for a cover story like this. One anecdote we got in the story was with, from Virginia's Dom Starger, who is particularly grooming a long stick midfielder solely with Miles Jones in mind. So that just shows you how polarizing and, and dynamic a force he can be. Yeah, I mean, he's a guy that's going to be around the game for a while, I think. Um, he's had, in, in the story, um, I don't want to give away too much, but he's, he has conversations with John Donowski about you know, his future in the game and you know, where, where this game can take him and, and kind of what his role will be in the next couple of years. And we expect when all said and done, Miles Jones will be in the tour in conversation. The other big feature we have in this magazine is on the women's side and really be summed up in three words, is Virginia back? And I say back because back when I started at Lacrosse Magazine in 2005, Virginia was the team in women's lacrosse. Just coming off an NCAA championship, they had the best player in the country in Amy Pelt. And then there was a changing of the guard that year. A uh, team known, little known team from Evanston, Illinois, known as uh, Northwestern, started its run of seven NCAA championships in eight years, beating Virginia in that 2005 final. And uh, Virginia kind of regressed into this sort of 500 team that um, maybe made an occasional NCAA quarterfinal appearance, but really not until last year did they resurface as a national power. And it really happened in the second half of last year. They were sort of a surprise NCAA semifinalist. Um, and, and the story kind of gets into how they, they, they model themselves to some degree after Northwestern, ironically, uh, with that raw, physical brand of athlete combining with the finesse game that Virginia had always been known for. And that uh, perfect blend, we feel like, is coming back in 2014, and Virginia should be back in the Final Four conversation. Yeah, the quote that stuck out to me after reading Megan Schneider's story is Julie Myers saying, we, we all kind of have learned something from Northwestern, speaking, you know, probably for some, a lot of other teams as well. So, um, you know, as, far, as long as I've been at Lacrosse Magazine, um, you know, there's been kind of that same elite group of women's teams. And, you know, for Virginia, you know, they look like, you know, they're prepared to, to kind of crack back into that, that upper echelon again. We also have some special video content uh, supplementing some of our most popular departments in the magazine. Uh, our instructional content, um, you know, this, this month we're featuring Ryan Brown's shooting tips and our, off the field we have Australian and uh, big Stevenson defenseman Callum Robinson so you get to hear all about his, his uh, pets in his, uh, in his Australian accent. Also in January we've got our MCLA and WCLA previews, also our NLL preview with our resident Hall of Fame writer Neil Stevens. You'll find a Q&A with a CNN anchor Aaron Burnett, former lacrosse player at Williams, and also a look at the uh, club versus rec lacrosse scene as it exists today. So that's it. Thanks for watching our first foray into Inside the Edition of Lacrosse Magazine. Be sure to check out our YouTube channel for all these new videos, and happy holidays. My name's Cal Robinson. I'm a junior at Stevenson University, and I play defense. Welcome to my room. Robinson.
Stevenson, the defender out of Stevenson. I'm Ryan Brown. I'm a junior attack man here at Johns Hopkins, and today I'm going to go over shooting from time to room. 